What's up guys here with On Deck episode number seven. We had the last dual weekend of wrestling, Iowa, Hammer Oklahoma State last night. We had the uh, Kevin Dresser Iowa State debacle, which I'm going to ask Coach Papalizio about. Um, and, and a handful of other good rivalry duels. Iowa Navy was really good. Um, and so now we obviously have this weekend off. We're going into all the conference tournaments weekend after that. And then two weekends to NCAA. So we are, we're coming out of crunch time. March is going to be crazy because we have us that. And then the OP trials are just two weeks following uh, the NCAA championship. So I'm going to bring Pat Pop on. I wanted to bring him last week because last week they beat Virginia Tech. They had just followed up that win over North Carolina. Um, he now finished the season 15 and 0, and I, I know he's a huge proponent of the national duel thing, which I am as well. Uh, so let's bring on Coach Pop Lizio and talk to him about that. What's up, guys? We're here with Coach Pop. What's going on? All is good in Raleigh. All is good. Well, that that is true. You guys, uh, you guys had the heck, heck of the last month, and you finished the season undefeated. So you know, this is this brings us right to our point right away. Right away, I knew you'd go right to it. <laughs> Cut to the chase. You're, yep. you're 15 and 0, but no one's going to call you the national champ. So, oh. I mean, you and I, I think we both agree there should be some type of dual national championship. You guys haven't lost this year. Iowa also obviously hasn't lost. Wouldn't it be just wonderful if we could have you and them wrestle in some way, shape, or form? It would be great. Uh, you know, I don't know any other sports where you can go through a regular season and just have people vote on on who's the best in the country. And, you know, not sitting here saying we are going to compare anything like that, but it at least to let things play out in competition. I think that's critical. Yeah. Um, and so I guess I, I I don't know what you're – I'm pretty sure I know what your take is, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. My, my take is that we could have a, a split season, right? We could have a dual portion of the season in which there's some kind of set formula of amount of matches that everyone's going to wrestle. At the end, you have an 8- or 16-team national championship, however you want to do it. Uh, and then you have your, 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 your tournament season – same way, has a format. And the end of the season, we have the NCAA championships, which can also be scored. You know, I, I always bring up Trek. Trek has an indoor season and outdoor season, which are contested separately. I don't see why we couldn't do something similar. Yeah, I think it's a lot like when you watch the NCAA basketball. Why can't we do something where we're at the same arena and we have a two hour window where two, two dual, like what dual meets going on? Yeah. And, you know, two hours later, another dual meet, and we can go basically four duels a day. Um, on a long weekend, and you yeah. can have this concept. And I know I'm confident we would sell out arenas with you know the way the duels are shaping up right now with certain teams. That if we do it in the right location, we would sell out arenas, and then and then at the end of the year, it goes down to individuals. You know, yeah. it's crazy to me that what we're doing in this sport. Our whole year has been focused in on these dual meets, and then the last weekends of the you know the season we're going to switch to something totally different a totally different concept with scoring and mentality yeah i mean to to your point about filling up arenas i think that's a huge one because i don't i don't think it was there say five years ago or 10 years ago but you know essentially these duels are you know meaningless if you will right they're not they're not progressing towards the national title yet you're still having i watch nc state sold out princeton packed arena oh. uh I, uh iowa penn state ohio state michigan Right, yeah. All, everyone, everyone across the board. Uh, you know, as long as you're close to top twenty, you're pretty much packing the house. So I think there's definitely a model where I mean, because I, I think let's not let's not beat around the bush. NCA loves money. Yeah, the NCA wrestling makes the money. I think the NCA dual tournament could make the money also. Uh, you could, yeah, you could double dip on it, and it is. You know, I think it's the common fan wants to support a team. Um, you know, half the times they don't even know who the guys are. Like if you take, for instance, people come to NC State watching a match, they don't know who everybody is in our lineup, but they know the guy's wearing an NC State singlet, and that's the guy they're going to cheer for and root for. And that's what's creating a new fan base. You know, the people that have always been in the sport that obviously are diehards, they know everything about wrestling, yeah. and they want to see the elite level, and they, they know the higher-level techniques. But the casual fan, they just want to come in here, yell loud, drink a beer in a match. And- <laughs> Rowdy, I, you were at, oh, I love it. You just broke it. Now, why do you think attendance went up? Well, you broke it down so easy. They drink a beer, they yell something crazy, and then that's that's it, right? Yeah. I it's, mean, I, I was bringing up some of the crazy stuff the Iowa fans were yelling when I was at Iowa Penn State a few weeks back. Your fans weren't actually that bad, although I did watch. I can't remember if it was your Virginia Tech or North Carolina. Actually, they're both at home. Um, yeah. I was really impressed. And listen, maybe, they, again, just like this guy yells, so I have to yell also, and I'm just having a good time. Yeah. They were getting jacked about some riding time. It was the, it was yeah. the Bullard-McFadden match. They Stall were getting, riding time, right? Yes. Was, 
cool. <laughs> they were getting jacked about writing time. I'm like, how in the hell do all these people know how important this writing time point is? You know, because essentially it won the match. Yeah, no, it did a couple of them. It was, it's good. I mean, it's just fun to watch people come, new people get involved in the sport of wrestling. And that, again, it goes back to dual meets because we could sit here and run a tournament with the six best teams in the country. Yeah. And I, and we could do it all day. And I bet you we would have a quarter of the attendance because yeah. people don't want to sit in an arena all day. And they, again, they want to cheer for their one school. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. So, okay. So let's go back. We talked to you right before th- this month. Um, so you're leading into these duels. Obviously, the ACC is tough as nails. We just had Pittsburgh beat uh, Virginia Tech. Yep, a great. Weeks back. Yeah. So you guys, obviously, you beat those three teams in a row. So three weekends in a row, you beat uh, Pittsburgh, then North Carolina, then Virginia Tech. I, I, I want to talk about the North Carolina, Virginia Tech specifically, kind of individually. Um, they, they were awesome. I mean, both duels were kind of like, Right down to I did they both didn't go to the last match right it was close to the last match. UC went down to the last ten seconds with heavyweights going at it. Yes, UC that, went down to the the very last match and then Virginia Tech came down to the second to last match right. Correct. Yeah, it was uh, three pins in a dual meet, which is crazy to, to see yeah. that and still be able to come out on top when you get pinned twice. So yeah, was, again, duels are exciting. Yeah, that was that was yeah that was crazy. Um, <laughs> Okay, so let's go through the, I don't know, kind of the ups and the downs of that, that UNC match. Um, and, I, you know, so you kind of, you go back and forth. You split the first six matches. Um, yep. And then you, you guys kind of pull in the lead, I guess, with Bullard and Hidley. They, they both won their match. At Hid, I've been yelled at, actually. Hidley. Hidley, yes. Like, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all right, though. Um, so then the emotional swing, Rian loses to Whitman. Uh, yep. I mean, it had to be a huge like down because that brings the duel within in two points, right? Yeah, we knew going in. I think it was uh, 65. We had one of the bowlers out that week. Um, he was like 60 percent, and we just I didn't see it in him to send him out there and wrestle. Yeah. So we, you know, we threw Barnes out there. He ends up getting tech fall, which you know, looking back, I was like that could have been really critical in the match if if we had split uh, five and five, and then 97. I knew we were in trouble once we, we threw a headlock and didn't get it. And, you know, Rena really wasn't ready to wrestle, um, feeling confident. So came down to heavyweight. And, uh, you know, the crazy thing is with Deontay, he's coming into his own right now, and he's never been in a, an environment like that with a big duel on, on you know, come, come down to heavyweight where the duel's on the line. And he handled stress and pressure, and he, he was a gamer. And that yeah. it was drama-filled because it's like you, you're watching two heavyweights go at it. And it's like who's going to make, you know, the, the one move to get the takedown or a mistake. And we had a lead. I think it was 3-2 with like 20 seconds to go. And, you know, mm-hmm. he took a beautiful shot, got in deep on a heavyweight. Leg started to come up. You know, when a heavyweight, you get a leg up. You never, <laughs> they're going to fall. And Deontay's athletic enough. And, you know, he sprawled, got his hips back, and obviously secured that. And then the yeah. it, loud as can be in that arena, you know, as many people breaking our attendance record was huge. So yeah. it, was, it was cool to see. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Okay. Uh, hey, oh, the other one I had to ask you about this one. I have been put up to this. Um, did you guys, did you guys set up the chair for Trent Hidley to break? Or did he just <laughs> did that on his own? <laughs> that, yeah, that was totally uh, on his own. And it was like the thing broke in pieces and shattered, but it was pretty fun. It's on, on video everywhere totally unscripted huh unscripted it was like the the wwe chairs when you hit just lightly and they shatter i think it was one of those the script was written perfectly well i so i came up with this thing on 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 flow you know frl where i think you guys should have a chair for after every match (laughs) i think fans would come just to see how he's gonna break the chair this time he's gonna come come up with new creative ways to smash the chair i think it would be fantastic i mean that's what you know, that's what people want to come see. They want to see people get excited. They want to see the guys, you know, obviously in a positive way to celebrate and cheer and nothing disrespectful. And sometimes we get animated and I, and I know our fans like that and appreciate that. So that's uh, passion. You, you weren't, you weren't yelling about the, uh, you weren't getting upset there about the team point rule. Were you? Cause I've had, I've had three other coaches bring it up to me. Yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think as long as it's nothing that's destructive or dis- disrespectful, um, I think you gotta let people celebrate and have a good time because that's that's what people want to see. You know, yeah. we gotta show emotion in a positive way. And I don't know, these guys work their tail off, so why can't we celebrate a little bit when we get a win? I agree. Brian Snyder was very, very animated, upset about yeah. it because they they actually lost yeah. two team points. Uh, which duel? It was it was the Ohio State duel. They God, lost. 
Do it. It was an awesome duel me. Why can't you celebrate? Those guys deserve it. That's it. That, that, well, that was his, that was his point. Yeah. He said they just essentially got the pin to win the duel me to beat the number three team in the country, yeah. and they they had a party. It was awesome. They shouldn't get penalized for that. No, I'm with you 100. percent It's these hard to get team points and to take them away just because a kid is excited, you know, and they're not doing anything disrespectful. They're not throwing their headgear, slamming it down, or they're cheering. So, yes. yeah, okay. I, Change I, think, it. I think everyone is kind of. I feel like every co. I feel like three people have independently brought that out to me, and everyone's kind of on the same page that it's kind of ridiculous that you guys should be able to celebrate if you want. I think we should, and I think refs are, you know, they're in control too much to take team points. Um, yeah. Something we got to work on, and and I think the better officials do a good job of not getting too worked up when you know people. If it, if it's in the rules, obviously we got to follow them, but I think it's something we got to address off season with with officiating. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Virginia Tech duel, um, another totally crazy one. Like you said, came down to two matches. Out, Jared Trombley got the pin to win. Um, you know, I want to bring this up, and because I th- I think you know you talked about your heavyweight Deontay Wilson in the last duel meet and how important he was. I feel like, I don't know what it is about your teams, but I feel like it's like, you never know who the hero is going to be. You know, it's like, I, you know, some team is like, oh, they got five good guys. These five good guys will win. These five good guys will lose. If the good guys get more bonus than the, the other guys give up, then they're going to win, you know? With yep. Your team, I always feel like, you know, in this one, you look at Jarrett Trombley's the hero. You, well, you didn't see that one coming. Uh, no. you, you know, I mean, the last one you talked about, Deontay Wilson. Um, you know, obviously Thomas Bullard's a big one in this one. Just like it feels like to me, every time it's a different guy. Yeah, and we actually talked about that after the match. It's uh, what makes this team really special this year. Uh, being in some barn burner duel meets, mm-hmm. we have someone new has always kind of stepped up to that and has been the the hero on a on a day where you think you know your leaders are going to go out there and get the job done. And I think that's one of those duel meets, you know, where on paper the guy's favored didn't win, and that's on yeah, both. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, and them, you know, and that's what made this duel meet real interesting. And um, three falls in it. I think that's crazy still to, to watch a college match with two top 10 teams and getting three falls going in into the duel meet. So I, there was a time when I was like, wow, when we got pinned for the second time, I'm like, all right, this, this duel meet's good. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, we, we, we had our back against the wall and, and on the paper matches, uh, th- we weren't favored at heavyweight. 25 and 33 on paper. You guys, guy, you guys won three in a row where you're the underdogs at. Well, underdogs and that, you know, and again, we were close. I mean, it wasn't like it was head and shoulders above each other's competition, but yeah. I stepped up and it was, it was fun to watch and fun to be a part because it is. The ACC's got really good teams in there right now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let, let me ask you, uh, it's a semi-leading question if you don't mind. Yeah. Because it's one of the things I always bring up and I feel like, you know, you are one of the handful of college coaches that really your guys personify it. But I always talk about the improvements you guys you can make year over year in wrestling. Like that's one of my favorite things about wrestling. It's like you can just keep getting better and better and better. And one of the things that I've seen happen with guys in your program is they may even be good. They might not be, but they might also be good high school wrestlers. And the guy I'm going to bring up now is Thomas Bullard. And you know, he kind of didn't have a great first couple of years. And I, you know, me as an outsider, they ah. Eh, yeah, they're good in high school, but they're kind of struggling. Then he beats McFadden. Then I go and look at his record, and I'm like, damn, he's really, really good. Like, he's only lost a couple matches this year. So I feel like your guys just keep getting – even if they don't get that initial spark, they just keep getting better. What What is it about your program that enables that? Yeah, we talk about it. It's not – wrestling at this level is not easy. And, you know, you do. You get your blue chippers, the guys that just comes natural, and they go out there, and they just from start to finish have a great career. And then you have those guys that got to be a little more gritty, and it's not going to come as easy. And you know, and I'm sure the bowlers expect to win right away, but it, it's been a struggle um, year one, year two. But what I love about those guys is they stay the course and they stay the plan, and mentally they haven't checked out. And I think that's the biggest thing that we focus in on is mentally not checking out as an athlete. If you're not getting the success that you want, if you stay consistent, you know, I think. We all know you get a little bit of spark in, in college mm-hmm. wrestling. Absolutely. And you can make your name. Um, and that's what those guys are doing right now. A couple other guys are stepping up. Uh, Camacho's a good, another good one right now. I think you're starting to see that too. Um, but those guys feed on each other. And they know um, it helps when you had guys in the past like Tariq Wilson. You know, you go back to the year that he took third. You know, I think he had nine losses going into NCAs and just yeah. was, you know, okay, I've had a couple good close matches and, and I'm still in this. And it's, 
college, you know, college wrestling is a long, long season, especially if you're not, you're, you're undefeated and you're teching and majoring. I think, you know, you've been a part of that where you're, you're destroying guys. I thought you said, I think you said under, <laughs> under, I think you said undefeated, <laughs> like as in you're a diet the whole time. No, no, no. But, you know, you're, you're, yes, you're I thin and winning and you're beating all these guys. It's easy. And then when you're not, and you're taking some losses. It's mentally, how do you handle it? And uh, I think that's one thing that these guys pride themselves on is just mentally staying in, in the zone and, and not checking out. Um, and I think we've seen that with, I think that's what gonna, what's going to get us to where we need to be this year is having, you know, I went through and I'm looking right now, we got guys with seven or eight losses, but they're all real close ones that I think are ones we can fix and fine tune and, and be right in the mix of things come NCAs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, okay. La- last question and comment to as deep as you want or as not deep as you want. I know I'm interviewing this guy tomorrow on FRL. Kevin Dresser set up this last chance open. I don't know the college rules as well as you do. Um, to me, I looked at the brackets and I thought, hmm, this doesn't feel right. That, that was yeah. my initial feeling. I don't know if it's by the rules, not by the rules. Um, give me a few good questions to ask him tomorrow. Um, no, I think he, the fact that it, it's allowed to happen, um, and I think he can speak for himself. The NCAA has got to get involved at this point. Um, and they got to fix this. Uh, I don't know if injury defaults are not defaults, but yeah, you know, yeah. matches like that shouldn't count. I, I think inner squad matches should not be counting on guys' records. I get guys are going to get hurt. You can't control that. But the inner squad, I, even my team, when we match up, I don't think they should be counting on our records. Furthermore, I think as college coaches, we're too involved. We shouldn't be on the coaches' rank. I shouldn't be doing coaches' rankings for athletes. Uh, you can't. You're human, so you're going to obviously by default go in favor your guy if you ever yeah. come across that so i think we got to just get better at a sport um and not allow coaches to dictate these kind of things and if you do allow us to do it i think you're going to see these things happen more and more so i you know i i think it's something that we we i think he's kind of helped push it to the front end that change has got to happen yeah, next year and until then you know hats off to him for figuring out the loophole to, to get, get better and get his guys more wins I'm going to have an open next weekend. <laughs> Are you really? You should do it. Just like have a. We should do it. We can all know, get a couple more wins. Mark Gross can show up and he can yeah, wrestle. Frank Beasley right. can come back and, you know, they can. Oh, gosh. We'll have a good heavyweight division there. <laughs> uh, Beasley's not a heavyweight. Take it back. Yeah, right. Have you seen him? He's a good light heavyweight. 250. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, okay. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I appreciate you chatting as always. Anything else you want to tell us? You guys got AC season a week and a half. Yep, uh, we're going on a Sunday, so almost close to two weeks. Yeah, so we're wrestling. Oh, you on... guys are on Sunday. Oh, yep. okay, cool. So we got a little while. Nice. All right. Well, uh, it was fun following your dual season. I appreciate you guys coming, uh, you coming on again, and I'll see you in NCAs. You got it. All right, thanks, Ben. All right, that was Coach Papalizio of North Carolina State. Uh, man, we talked about a lot of stuff. I'm glad he was, He, you know, he's always very open and candid, which is one of the things I appreciate about uh, interviewing him. I feel like we've been all all over the ACC recently. Um, you know, obviously they do have, like, like I mentioned, both coaches, a lot of really good teams, which wasn't the case a little while ago. Their fan bases are growing by, by loops and bounds, so that's a lot of fun. Um, and now we're going to bring on Keith Gavin. So you, as you heard, Keith, uh, Pat Pop was, they did beat Keith Gavin, but Keith Gavin and the Pittsburgh Panthers just got a huge win over uh, Virginia Tech. And then Keith Gavin and the Pittsburgh Panthers are going to host uh, the ACC championships coming up in about a week and a half. So let's bring on Keith. What's up, Keith? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, doing pretty well here in beautiful Wisconsin. I will be in Pittsburgh in a couple of weeks, actually. We've got wrestling in the... Well, you guys used to call it the Dapper Dan. What do you guys call it now? Yeah, now it's the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. That's at, it's a, that's at your place, correct? Yeah, it's at the Fieldhouse. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. So, uh, we got a guy named Keegan O'Toole Wrestling in it, and I'm actually, uh, I get to be an honorary coach, so that'd be pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great event. It's going to be packed, you know, which really? is, have, have you ever been? No, I didn't get, I wasn't good enough to get invited. I think Johnny yeah, I mean, Hendricks got invited at my weight. Who got invited over you, Herbert or something? Herbert, yeah. Well, no, actually, Herbert and I were different weights. Oh, uh, White Soul. Uh, no, uh, Taylor Letters. Troy Letters, the younger brother. He wasn't very good, though, I didn't think. He was good. Yeah, he, he was state really? champ. Oh, yeah, he was state champ. He went to Clarion then. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, you know he, what I remember, Keith? You just made me think uh, of this. Don't, wasn't, weren't White Soul and Herbert the Herbert. same weight? And didn't Roger yeah. Kish say he wrestled both of them and then Herbert beat him or something? 
I don't know. But Herbert beat Weitzel to win a state title his senior year. Uh, I, I think and, then, and then Jake wrestled Jake wrestled Kish at the the Dapper Dam back then. Who won? Did Kish. Win? Oh, Kish beat him. I think Kish tech followed him. Stop. Was, I think style? You got that up. No. I I'll Jake out, but I'm pretty sure oh that's what Oh, my happened. goodness. If you're telling yeah. lies about Jake, what's yeah. that? Dapper Dan, 2003. I'm looking yeah, at look it up. I remember he, because he like bumped up, and I remember it going and not going well. Yeah. Oh, Jake bumped up the wrestling. Was that what they did? Because Roger Kish was the wrestler of the year that year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying. Now, it's, it's all coming back. I'm trying to like think think through it. I'm trying to find a I remember it was, uh, Yeah, I remember it not going well. But. Jake Herbert takes down uh, Roger Kish takes down I'm not finding the score here but I am finding that Kish beat him um, yeah this probably doesn't make for good radio for me yep Taylor Letters beats Eric Taylor Letters was beating Eric Tannenbaum yeah wow okay yeah Taylor was good wow I, I, I didn't remember that at all okay mm-hmm. so Jake Herbert who's ranked number one in the country bumps up from 171 to 189 yes right he, he weighs in at 178 pounds <laughs> and uh, he he dominated Kish dominated him and pinned him in the third period. Pinned him. I knew it was one or the two. Wow, I didn't remember that. Oh, Jake's gonna be so mad for bringing this up. Yeah, he bounced back though. Yeah. Oh, he did all right. Um, you yeah. know what? One really good memory I have of Pittsburgh. Actually, remember that one time I I was a year after I graduated and Jake was on uh, Olympic Red Shirt. I came I yeah. stayed at your house and you had yeah. me up in the attic. It wasn't even warm enough, so you had me give me this little space heater <laughs> and used to heat up my bed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's on Robinson Street. We still have guys that live there. At know? that house? Uh, uh, up until last year. I don't oh. think anybody lives in the house now. But, uh, wow. but yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, downtown Pittsburgh, I feel like it's went through like a renaissance revitalization, right? It's gotten way nicer. Yeah, yeah downtown's way is, is a lot nicer than it was just 10 years ago. Yeah. Just they added a lot of stuff, you know, restaurants, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was there for NCAs. I was there for something else besides NCAs. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon got headquarters down here now, so that that, that helps Amazon a lot. Does? Yeah, I think so. It Google and Amazon. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about we can talk about a lot of stuff. Let's talk about wrestling in Pittsburgh specifically. You're in your third year. Um, I, I guess we'll just start out with the big win you guys had a couple days ago. You guys just beat Virginia Tech. Um, mm-hmm. It's your last duel this season going in. There, you know, they were ranked number seven. Um, Man, I, I guess I, I wouldn't say, you know, a lot of people, you guys are much improved, but a lot of people didn't, including myself, didn't see this one coming, you beating them like that. Um, uh, is this something you guys, did you guys look at the matchups and you thought, okay, this is the way we're going to win, or were there a few things that were totally unexpected? Uh, well, th- there was going to be some close matches and some swing matches, but the way it was going throughout the year, but that was like um, pretty much every, AC, you know, our duel with NC State was like that. Our duel with UNC was like that. But we lost all those, yeah. and so it was nice to kindly, uh, or to finally, to finally get one of them. So we won. You know, 184 was a big one. Uh, we we pulled the upset there. Uh, 57 was a toss up win. We got that one. So it's kind of been a while since we we won one of those swing matches, and and we got two in that Virginia Tech duel. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because uh, both those matches. Nino obviously was ranked really high last year. He's, he just his sophomore year is hasn't been quite as smooth as his freshman year, but this win, obviously with the with the Zahid news, Bolin yeah. Bolin's the number one ranked guy in the country, and so yeah. you know he beats Hunter Bolin, you know, and so now going into ACCs, I don't really know how they're going to see him between Hydley, Bolin and Bonacorsi, but I think if he win, if he were to win the ACCs, he could get a, a two, three, four seed somewhere in there. Yeah, it's a heck of a weight class. I mean, the, those top guys are pretty good. With Bowling, you said he was ranked second. I think uh, he was third. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah. I mean, he's got his work cut out for him, but he's good enough to beat just about anybody because his offense is so good. You know, I mean, he scores a lot of points, and so anytime that he could spend a lot of time on his feet in a match, he's gonna usually come out on top. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I believe those guys are one. Each one is one. Won't want to get each other right because Bowling beat. Uh, Hidley, Hidley beat Bonacorsi, and Bonacorsi beat Bowen now. Yeah, yeah. So they'll, they'll match up again in two weeks. You guys, are, you guys are hosting that. You guys are busy. You guys are hosting the, the yeah. Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. You're hosting the ACCs. Yeah, yeah. yeah ACCs yeah. will be at our basketball arena at Pearson Event Center, and then the okay. Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic is in a, in the field house where we wrestle our home duels. Okay, nice. But yeah. 
Um, so yeah, the, the other big, the other upset that duel to, to Libra Mani, who again, he, you know, he had a really good last year, but he's kind of been struggling a little bit this year. I don't know yeah. if talk about that, but he beats BC LaProd, who's been having a really good year at 107 yeah. pounds. Yeah, he's beating them every time they wrestled. So, uh, you feel good about that, but he was also kind of losing a lot of matches that he shouldn't have lost. So, yeah. uh, so yeah, that was a toss up, but he, uh, he did a good job of just kind of wrestling in his positions. He's got a weird style. Um, and sometimes it's like, it's good to believe in that, but sometimes it's like, he, he just wings it, you know, but this time he was, uh, he was a little more focused of like getting to positions he was comfortable in, you know, and, and it was good to see that really our whole team was wrestling well and, and, uh, really focused in that match. Cause you know, at the end of the year, that's the way you want to be. Yeah. Okay, um, and then you guys closed it out. Another guy, who, this guy's been having just kind of a good year across the board, Demetrius Thomas. Um, yeah. He, he, he wins big against John Boris, too. Bor- Boris is really tough. And, uh, you know, Demetrius Thomas isn't a guy I heard of prior to, I want to say last year was the first time I ever heard of him. And yeah. now, you know, I think he's in serious contention to All-American this year. Yeah, he's a beast. He's probably like the hardest working heavyweight I've ever been around. I mean, everything we do from running and lifting, I mean, that guy is 100%. And uh, he just has a really good perspective on the sport. But he's from Missouri, actually. He's from Missouri. He, he went, Yeah, he's from Ferguson, uh, Missouri. I got to look him up. He started wrestling, I think, in maybe oh, sophomore year high school. He went to McClure. That's where, uh, that's where Tyron went to. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And then he uh, – so he went NAIA out of, uh, out of high school. Okay. Um, won an NAIA. Uh, national title there, and I happen to know the guy that was coaching him at NAI. He's from he's from uh, Pittsburgh area, Pennsylvania. Kerry Regner. Oh, whatever. Uh, Kerry was. Uh, he's the head of Millersville right now. Oh, because he but well, didn't he try to start a Greco program also? And he, he was yeah he was in the he out of high school he went to that Northern Michigan program wrestled there for you know a while and did the Greco thing and but uh but yeah we were you know same age growing up. He was in that Angry Fish Club, which, like every good wrestler in my era, PA was in that club. Yeah, I mean, but, seriously. Do you see yeah. Whitfield's got four? four uh, this was as of two weeks ago, Pletcher lost. But Whitfield had four number one ranked wrestlers in the country. That's freaking crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's strong. We got to get them all coming to pit. <laughs> <You can laughs> go round, round them up. They're, they're, you know, just right down the road there at, uh, damn, yeah. what was the high school I did a camp at a couple years? What's the really good one? Oh, Franklin Regional. Yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. down the road, right? Yeah, yeah. Highway 22 or something like that. That's right, Murraysville. Yeah. Did you do it was that for Young Guns. <laughs> yeah, yep, I did yeah. it for Young Guns. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so w- let's also talk about how tough the ACC is getting. I think this is relevant. I just talked to Pat Papalizio. I kind of mentioned you before the show, but, you know, this <laughs> is a conference. I don't know if you think back think back to when you, was, you or I were in college. Yeah. ACC wasn't very good at all. Yeah. And now you guys have four teams that are legitimately ranked top 10 in the country. Uh, Pitt, Virginia, Tech, and North Carolina, North Carolina State. And Virginia's pretty good, too. You know, they're not quite up there with those other ones, but yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's it's impressive how fast it's happened, too. Really? Yeah. It, it's been like, it's, it hasn't been that long, you know. Um, but when we wrestled, I always say this is like you're pretty happy you get an ACC guy first round, you know. <laughs> yeah. But now it's uh, you know, we have a. I think what's happening really is just that first of all, everybody's got a pretty good coach, you know. I mean, these, those guys uh, are doing a good job, you know. But the administrations are putting time into wrestling at these places, yeah. so uh, giving us the support, and I think that goes a long way. Absolutely. Okay. Last last question, then I'll let you just have the floor, and you can tell us anything you want to tell us. Um, <laughs> well, it could be dangerous. Um, I, I talked to Pat Pop. He's pretty. He's pretty insistent on having some type of dual national tournament. And I, I agree. I, and I don't. I'm not one where it says I want to do it with the NCAs as they are. I think they're fantastic. Yeah. I think you could very easily do a split season, have nationals, dual nationals first. You know, and have a dual part of the season where there's a real schedule. Having wrestled, say Friday, Sunday, whatever it is, twelve matches, and then do it. And then you can have a tournament part in an astronaut. Where where do you fall on this spectrum? How do you feel about it? And um, just kind of give us your whole take. Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's like obviously Pat's going to be into it. He's their fifteen and zero this year. <laughs> feel good about having three championships, but uh, but no. But in all seriousness, I think it's the way that you 
people, I mean, our duel with Virginia Tech, people loved it, you know. Mm-hmm. We had a great crowd. They were getting into it because it was just, it's, it's easy to get behind. Where if you're in a, you know, you go to a, a in-season tournament and you're in the gym for 12 hours a day, it's like people aren't going to get into that. You know, that's not how you're going to grow it. But our individual tournament is, uh, it's one of the best things we do, you know. So we can't really, I don't want to mess with that. But it would be, it seems like it'd be simple to do a, a dual meet championship. You know, like if you just had everybody who won the, their conference, you're in the bracket, you know. But uh, I don't know. I think that maybe the holdup is that they're trying to get the NCAA to approve two championships. Yeah. For well, what I told Paz, the NCAA, there's one thing they love, it's money. And wrestling's now yeah. proving that they can make them money. So yeah. they just let us, we'll just pitch them that we're, hey, we're going to go make you some more money. Just let us do what we want. And then everyone's happy. Yeah. Yeah, I could be wrong. But I think I think they do it for other sports, right? It doesn't like track have indoor and outdoor right. yep. championships? That, that's the one I bring up. That they've, yeah. And really, you could, you could also say that track also has cross country because there's a lot of people who are yeah. on both teams, right? I mean, the, yeah. essentially the distance portion, they're doing both track and field and cross country. So those people would have the cross country – the tra- indoor track and the outdoor track, the outdoor championships all over the course of a season. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's just, dual meets are just fun too, yeah. you know, and even for for us, it's like we're, we're not the, the general fan, but it's still like, you know, dual meets are fun. Yeah, so. Pat, Pat's take was that people wanted to drink beer and yell at people. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that was fantastic. Yeah, you could do that pretty much anywhere though. But. <laughs> well, rest, there's something about wrestling with two guys fighting each other. I mean, it's just like, well, I think MMA, that, that brings in like the low of the low fans. Wrestling is like a step above that class-wise unless you're in Iowa. Yeah, I, was, I mean, you're, you're being generous, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I can imagine MMA is a little bit worse. Oh, yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, it was fun talking to you. We don't get to talk yeah. that often. Um, any last words for us? Any words of advice? What do you got to tell us? Uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, thanks for taking the time. I think that um, – you know, we're excited to host the, the ACCs this year, and it's the same weekend as the PA State. So hopefully, uh, Wait, people is that in Pi- oh no, that's not in Pittsburgh, is it? It's in Hershey, but uh, oh. hopefully we that doesn't hurt our attendance, and people are hardcore fans and don't mind being at a tournament four days in a row. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. A rest, but, uh, a rest of vacation. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. All right, Keith, I appreciate it. Uh, you know what? Let's make let's make a point to get together when I'm in Pittsburgh in a, in a couple weeks. Yeah, sounds good. I'll see you then. You got it. See you, bud. All right, you heard from Keith Gavin. We even we we took a, a trip down memory lane there. Brought me back to the good times of stay. I stayed in Pittsburgh for a week and trained with Keith and Jake over Christmas break 2007. Stayed up <laughs> upstairs. Humble roots. Stayed upstairs. Had to have a little heater to heat my space because there wasn't enough heat up there. Oh, those are fun, fun times before uh, before all the seriousness of life life got going. So that's it for us this week on deck number seven. Hope you appreciated talking to Coach Papalizio and Coach Gavin. I had fun as always. Um, man, this weekend's going to be boring, so I, I don't know who we're going to bring on. We're going to have to figure out a few good guests for next week. And then obviously the weekend for that, We'll be doing you know, the conference championship. So it's going to be very, very, very easy to find a whole bunch of fun people to talk to. Uh, until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.